Good evening everybody, it's 7 o'clock so we shall start on time. Can I welcome you to the parish hall, I nearly said the parish church, Floyd and the there. So can I welcome you to the, to the parish hall for this Hustings meeting. Can I thank you for coming and the candidates have asked me to chair this Hustings. As we know there are seven candidates for four positions of deputy and polling day is a week today. As previously agreed with the candidates, they will each first make an introductory speech for two and a half minutes, and then following that, there's the opportunity to ask questions from the floor. Obviously, we will finish, we're planning to finish the meeting at 8.30, so can I ask if you do have a question, you keep your question brief, so that then there is more opportunity for as many people as possible to ask those questions. Questions can only be asked from constituents who live within either St. Mary, St. Peter or St. Juan. And so you'll be asked, when you ask your question, to give your name and which parish you live in. Um, we will take two questions at a time and the candidates will have 90 seconds each to answer those two questions. But I'll remind you of that once the speeches are over. So you know we have drawn lots, so the numbers where the candidates are sitting have been drawn randomly. So we will begin. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> during this term of office, I have worked on behalf of all islanders during one of the most difficult and challenging periods in recent history to ensure Jersey remained resilient safe and financially secure. My key focus during the pandemic was on protecting our health, the economy, and Ireland's jobs and livelihoods. In my role as Minister, I have represented the island overseas, both defending and promoting our interests, and strengthening our relationships with other countries and jurisdictions. My key priorities for the next term of office are tackling the sharp increases in the cost of living, Resolving the housing affordability crisis, rebuilding and further and developing our economy, improving skills and education to provide new opportunities and retraining and reskilling for people of all ages, to finally getting our new hospital built on time and within budget and ready to be fully operational and treating patients by December 2026, and to make certain we get strong, decisive leadership to rebuild confidence, unite our state assembly, delivering proof management of the public sector, smaller government structures and rigid cost controls to ensure we are delivering the very best possible value for the taxpayer. Now Jersey is facing significant challenges and it, it is therefore important for Islanders to elect a state assembly <coughs> that is both representative of our community and which contains the skills and experience necessary to deal with the challenges that lie ahead. The new state assembly will require a combination of fresh thinking together with highly experienced people <coughs> with a strong track record of dealing with difficult and challenging issues. And I can tell you a bit about that. Um, I am not in favour of the new electoral system, especially not in favour of the removal of the, removal of the office of senator. The Office of Senator is by virtue of its island-wide mandate the most democratic and therefore the most accountable. We have all been disenfranchised by this move and it must be put right by the new assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, my aim is to be the very best possible representative for you, to continue to serve our community, to uphold our special parish system and our unique island identity and to work hard on your behalf our future prosperity and well-being. Thank you very much. Not only does she genuinely offer a fresh perspective 
there's a crown in New Jersey. But it all says, we are committed to a group of independents working together called A Better Way. We have six key principles that draw us together. Firstly, we will listen and work in an assembly that is responsive to your needs. Decisions are sustainable, balancing social, economic, and environmental well-being. Spending is affordable both now and for future generations. Diversity is valued, recognising the potential of every member of our community. Business and entrepreneurial spirit are supported to create financial growth and stability. And finally, Jersey plays a positive role internationally. The group formed as a result of our listening uh, campaign for the Let's Talk session. They brought people together to encourage public discourse and debate. Through those stimulating meetings, we joined and found a path and joined forces because listening matters. In our political system, scrutiny works outside of government so that it can offer advice and different perspectives. We've successfully amended significant propositions, but sadly, the government has often refused to listen to our advice. We've met a large number of disillusioned people as we canvassed these last weeks. They're worried about spending and the inextricably expensive hospital, a tax office that sends out incorrect information, and we're losing public sector workers who treat our ill and teach our young. With challenges ahead, a new leadership stimulate growth and re revenue, restoring confidence, cutting red tape, and keeping our tax system low, broad, simple, and fair. We will prioritise and exercise restraint. That's why we must revisit the hospital project. Looking at the candidates across the island, I think we can build a great team. I hope that electors will return an assembly that will unite, conduct respectful debate, explore new ideas.
As a voter in this election, you've got the power to inspire the change that is so desperately needed. Thank you. So what have I learned in the last four years? I'm afraid that an apple and iron like ours is not delivering <coughs> as well as we can for those we serve. Education is good, but our state school outcomes are slightly worse than the UK. In health, our waiting lists are unacceptable, and our ability to recruit talent is deeply concerned. I worry about our young and their future in Jersey, about buying or renting homes, about their career aspirations, and the variety of options open to persuade them to stay. But what is most disturbing, whilst knocking on doors, is the number of people who say they won't be voting. Why, I ask, and the answer is invariably, but it won't make a difference, nothing will change. They hit the nail on the head. Well, if nothing will change, you must look at the root cause of why, then you must address it. I believe that a Jersey Alliance believes the ministerial government isn't working. This needs to be fixed urgently, so the people of Jersey can have the government it deserves. with your support, 
I hope to again lead us to a successful outcome. In St Peter and St Mary's, I spoke about my policies to address the housing crisis and the cost of living crisis. I am also clear that the state is spending too much, wasting too much, and borrowing too much. We must reduce debt, spend our existing resources wisely. If elected, I will protect all that we value in St Wall. Our countryside, coastline, and natural beauty. I ask for one of your votes on the 22nd of June. Thank you very much.
because I was so impressed by the effective teamwork of the Reform Journey members in the previous State Assembly. And I'm convinced that it is as a member of the Reform Journey that I can best represent you. As we emerge from the disruption caused by COVID, we now have the opportunity, and I believe the responsibility, to build a better society for the future, a more cohesive society in which people can flourish. Reform Jersey has a track record of working in the State Assembly, and we've set out our commitment for how we will continue this work in our manifesto, which we see as our contract with the public. The nine key pledges for our manifesto are in my election leaflet, and they cover so many of those areas that people are raising with them on the doorstep, including the future of the environment, the living wage, housing crisis, cost of living, for example, we want to take GST on food and other essential items, and other matters including provision of public transport that are a concern. We, if elected, I will work to deliver on our manifesto commitment to make Jersey a fairer society, prepare it for the challenges of future, and increase government accountability and democracy. Thank you. Thank you. So we're now going to offer the opportunity now for questions. Um, as I've said, um, the questions um, will take two at a time. The questions should be general, so they can be answered by all of the candidates. And if you could keep your question brief, that would be appreciated. What I'm probably going to do for fairness is I will we take two questions. I'll take one from this side of the room and one from this side of the room. If you've got a question, um, there's a, so there. Has anyone got a question from this side that they'd like to ask? There's a, there's a young man there. Um, and if you could just give your name and which parish. We'll start there. Uh, good evening. Uh, Patrick Lynch, uh, Parish of St. Peter. Uh, during this election campaign, and even tonight, we've heard a lot of the candidates reference the housing crisis, and rightly so. But there has been very little, if any, mention of the ever-increasing problem on the island of homelessness. Two issues which I think everyone would agree are surely intertwined. Uh, I run the charity Caritas Jersey, where we do a lot of work with the homeless. And we are the charity sector's representative on the island's Homelessness Strategy Board. The Homelessness Strategy was published over 18 months ago, so I would ask the candidates tonight, will they commit to the full implementation of that strategy in the next assembly, and of the eight key priorities within that strategy, which they consider to be the most important? Thank you. Hey, I'm, I'm Gabriel and I'm from St. Morn. I was just wondering who the candidates want to be the next Chief Minister. Okay. And we will give each candidate a chance to ask, answer questions first and withdraw on once again and Christina will take the questions first. Thank you, Luke, for the questions. So, um, homeless is something that we all know and we Um, and also through knocking on doors. Um, sadly, we have met uh, a surprising number of families where grandparents are homing not only their children, but their grandchildren, uh, as uh, the, the children are finding difficulties for one reason or another to find housing that they can afford in the island. And that seems to cut across all classes of people. We find professional people in this situation as anybody else because the growing squeeze middle, are, they are growing and they have to be addressed. So Patrick, to answer your question very directly, the homelessness strategy needs to be dusted off the shelf, I think, and relooked. And uh, I'm certainly committed to, um, to seeing the delivery <coughs> of it, um, and that will be a matter for the next housing minister. Um, on Gabriel's question, uh, I hope that the next assembly, if you re-elect me as St Mary's of one and St Peter, would consider me as uh, one of their chief ministers. I think that I can deliver change and unite the assembly, uh, and I think that we have a 
across the island a considerable number of uh, candidates who would work with me and deliver the change that you all wish to see. Um, I hope that candidates will uh, announce their intentions to you if they share the same. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for your question. Um, and the, I think we've really got to start at the very beginning with the homelessness strategy, and I think it's, is it perhaps the first recommendation of it, to have a definition of homelessness that we don't even have as an island. First of all, many people perhaps aren't aware of the scale of our homelessness issue and the hidden homeless that we have. Surfer, surfer coat, coat, I can't remember what I said now, but um, surfer, couch surfing, thank you. Yes, surfer <laughs> surfing is very difficult to say. Um, but also, I'm quite interested by recommendations such as the complex needs um, office and things like that, because actually that could represent some really powerful change for us as a community as we're going through a housing crisis perhaps not even just for our homeless, but actually wider than that as well. So, um, yes, I would certainly like to um, look towards committing. I believe I've not been involved in the creation of the document and looked at the costings and things like that in detail, so it's a tentative commitment to it, but certainly going that direction. Um, Chief Minister, I should keep it quick, but um, I've already said that I would support um, Senator Christina Horn to be our next Chief Minister. I don't have to say that just because we're both part of Better Way, um, but I do think she's got the experience on the ministerial and scrutiny side, and um, she also represents that fresh start that I spoke about in my speech at the beginning. Thank you, Patrick. Um, homelessness is an extension to the housing issue we have, which is supply and demand. Um, I, I knocked on the door of a, of a drug and alcohol um, a, a, a rehabilitate, a rehabilit rehabilitation centre yesterday in the of so somewhere in St Peter's and I was appalled to realise how many bedrooms they've got more, very few other options people have got. I bring that to, to the tension that we, we have people crying out in that world in order to, to get themselves fixed basically and then they've got nowhere to go when they come out of that. That's really, really important. So answer your question, I picked up on two of them ultimately, is the complex needs. We don't do joined up thinking in Jersey at all, and we really need to address that. Putting a team together with that holistic focus would be a really good idea. And the other one I picked up as uh, I'm a member of the Jersey Landlord Association, yes, we must build a better relationship with, uh, with, 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 private, with private landlords so we can open up their opportunities to, to free up their properties to the right people. Chief Minister, Smart Bodiat, we're honoured to have him, a, a proud Jerseyman who, who's plied his trade uh, around the UK, has gained an enormous amount of experience in both the public sector. Um, he's been chair of the, uh, sorry, the lead of the City of London, politician, the politician of the City of London. He's currently chairman of a, of a large organisation called Link. He brings all the skills that he wants to bring back to, to the island of his birth and the island of his culture. Um, in order to, to, uh, to, to uh, help the army go forward to the next stages. Which is uh, Patrick, thank you for your uh, question. You are right, there is a direct correlation between the increase of periods of homelessness that people are experiencing when they're at times of crisis. Uh, or, or times of change, particularly in their family circumstance or financial circumstance. It is 18 months since it was published, so I'm not going to pretend that I've got all of the details in front of my mind that I haven't, but I am committed, as well as dealing with the housing crisis, which I think we can make progress <coughs> on, also dealing with the homeless issue. And I think there is this complex need issue, and it's not just peculiar to people who are suffering periods of homelessness. There are lots of families with members of their family right across our community, from children to adults, who've got complex needs and are currently being let down by the government. The government's not good at dealing with complex needs and we need to change the approach that we take to these issues. Uh, Gabriel, when it comes to the uh, question of Chief Minister, we were asked this question in some area, I'm not going to change uh, what I said then, it really depends on how the parties do in this election. Because if uh, either of the two parties <coughs> happen to my uh, left and right, or 
if they get a lot of their candidates elected, they'll have a claim to say that their leader should be the chief minister. I've worked with all of those people who say they want to be uh, chief minister. There are others who have not yet publicly said they'd like to be chief minister, but I know they want to be. Um, and I think that perhaps if the parties don't do very well, then we will see another independent chief minister. And wouldn't it be nice if that chief minister again were in our district? Thank you. To be honest with you, I find it very upsetting. We are homeless people in Perth. We're a wealthy society. Why does that happen? But of course, it happens for very many reasons. And putting my mustard seed hat on for a little minute, uh, and people who are really suffering in our country, uh, we see it can be related to drink, it can be related to the government body, it can be related to mental health, drugs. There are many, many, and right now, there are many reasons why people become homeless, including the lack of housing. Terrible uh, problem over here, given that uh, there's been very little uh, social housing built for many years now, and we have to address that very quickly. And so I think that uh, we must support your proposition. Uh, Gabriel, uh, I'm a member of the Jersey Liberal Conservative. There is no better man than Sir Philip Ballish for the post of Chief Minister, simply because he has the gravitas, he has the knowledge, he is extremely experienced. And when dealing with outside bodies, with London, with France, wherever, he can communicate on a very good level. Uh, his mind works very, very fast. I'm amazed by the woman with him. And, uh, you know, somebody said to me, you know, he's not a young man. You want to listen to him. And he's right up there with uh, digital technology and other methods. Uh, he's definitely the main achievement. Yes, as a party before Jersey, we're definitely committed to implementing it. It's a bit difficult, I think, to identify the most important recommendation because I think it's a rather good strategy, and in fact, part of what makes it a good strategy is that the recommendations fit together well as a set. Um, but I think if I do have to identify one, I would probably go for strengthening the world supply of social housing which is certainly something we're committed to do. For example, the reform members in the previous assembly brought a proposition that where government owned land is developed for housing, 100% of it should go through Ambient. That proposition was defeated by other members, and that is certainly something we want to try again and hope we will get through at the second term if we have more members elected. On the question about Chief Minister, this, of course, and I know in some quarters this is controversial, is not an election for Chief Minister, it's an election for members of the State's Assembly. And I think the best Chief Minister is the one who can command a broad support across the Assembly, because that's required to have a functional government and who can work well for scrutiny, and in particular, can convene a council of ministers who will work together well. We know that no party is going to have no more majority over the next election because no party's got more than 14 candidates and more than 49 seats. Um, so we're going to have a council and minister which consists of independents and probably people from some or all of the parties. Our leader, perhaps, but the chief minister who can best work with the council and ministers for the assembly. Thank you. Two further questions?
we went on to an extraordinary position where it, it's all, we, there's almost been, well, I don't know how to describe it, but I do think sometimes we haven't been always working in the best treated interest of Ireland. There's a risk of scrutiny of almost become an opposition uh, party. We need to cast that aside and work together. Jersey, we've been doing it for decades. I don't think the parties will work. People of Jersey want to party to the country. We've got to cast that aside.
who um, hadn't worked for two years and perhaps she did think she'd work again because she was knocked off her e-bike in the house with some ones in an innocuous accident. And I'm sorry, I'm bringing that one up because it's fresh in my mind today. So if we're going to do all of this, and it's a really good idea, um, I'm not the number one health and safety expert in the assembly, but we have got to address that first and make sure that cycling is safe, regardless of anything. Thank you, Kate. Okay. The reality is, of course, in our district we've got three great uh, parish schools and they take inclusion uh, really seriously and they are uh, very inclusive. I worked with Senator Valwa when she was seeking uh, to think about the education funding model where she struggled uh, and she brought forward some, uh, formed a committee with some um, old hands, as it were, uh, in order to be able to get that funding through the government plan, and that now needs to be uh, used in the schools uh, appropriately. There are really a number of issues that need to be tackled. One is we need to allow teachers to teach rather than doing all the administration. We need to be paying teachers for teaching and find a different way of doing administration. They're also taken up with dealing with issues that either families or children's services uh, should be resolving, but they don't feel that they've got the support uh, there. I work with a, uh, sit on the board of a children's charity, and we see that every day. So they need more support to do that. If we can deal with some of these things which are not directly about what grades children are getting, but they're about support to deal with their, again, complex needs, uh, and to allow teachers to teach, then we'll get do far better on inclusion and everyone will reach their greatest potential. I forgot to press my timer. Uh, so when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, cycling across the three parishes, the answer's got to be green lanes and working in partnership with private landowners. It's not necessarily a job just for the deputies, of course, it really is the constables uh, working together who will unlock that. Thank you. And so I think what we need to do is to focus very much on, on the children from a very, very young age and bring them up and support them. Uh, I know through uh, one of my daughters who's a teacher, uh, teacher in a town school, that there are some pretty horrendous problems out there. And totally brought out some horrible issues which uh, she found very difficult to deal with. So uh, we really do, do need to uh, put every effort we can into education. Uh, the first line in our coalition manifesto is education is a very high priority for the coalition and we absolutely mean it. It is a very high priority and we must do it. Uh, and going through actually, one of the things we want to have is increased education in post-school so that we can teach far more trades in the island and go on to other things as well. Uh, there's 160 different uh, issues, in, uh, different careers in building. Uh, and we can train our young people into those 160 instead of bringing people over here from other places. <coughs> Cycling, yes, we absolutely must do it. Uh, there's no reason why we can't. And uh, it, it, you know, it's just for health and for, for the environment. Why not? Of early years and funding, I add 
Free school meals, which is in our manifesto, and is certainly something that's used elsewhere as part of the overall picture. And I'd add outdoor space is really important in schools and somewhat lacking in some of the town schools on more sites. The other thing I would say is that we need to see education, and I'm not suggesting you were doing this, but we need to see education not just in terms of data, targets, attainment, which is what sometimes happens when you're talking about education deprivation, but about wider life experience and cultural capital and youth service, I think does great work there, and that's certainly something we need to continue to support. And also, when we look at adolescents, I worry that our cost of living is so high that some adolescents are probably working in households where family money is lacking more than is good for their own well-being and their own education, and that's also a concern. On the second, there's a lot more I can say about that, but on the second question of cycling and walking routes, it would be great. I completely agree. And I think we then probably are part of the answer because, of course, it is very difficult to add cycle tracks and walking routes to narrow roads. Thank you. Take one from this side first. The gentleman in the blue jumper. 
and then one from this side, just the lady in the front there. Second row Second row in now. Thank you. Uh, David Perroway from St. Wands. The last assembly narrowly agreed in October to build a new hospital for a cost of 804 million. Inflation is expected to be at least 10% by the end of the year, and costs will increase. It is also, it also agreed to borrow 756 million to finance this at an interest rate of 2.5% or less. The government actually borrowed 500 million marks this year, the interest rate of 3%, and the interest rates are increasing. The financial case for the project dissipated a return of 5 to 6% from the Strategic Reserve Fund to cover the interest cost, which is always highly optimistic. Financial markets have fallen heavily since the beginning of the year, some as much as 15 to 20%. Do you agree that a quick review of the project, including the financial considerations, needs to take place immediately after the elections to ensure the current plan is both affordable and fit for purpose, as the current plan provides less services than is currently offered in the existing hospitals? Thank you. Uh, Fiona Cassis Brown, St. One. I teach English to people who have moved to Jersey and are working in our essential industries, care homes, construction, hospitality, who regularly face host hostility, uh, they're told to go home. They also tell me that they actually don't have Jersey friends. How would you propose to encourage integration and inclusion? Um, that was a very long question. <laughs> uh, and I tried to scribble down. Um, the, we need a hospital. We're ready to go with the hospital. Um, and that is absolutely clear. We must go ahead and build the hospital. Um, but what I will talk about is your comments on the financing of the hospital, which I think is really, really very clear to understand. Um, the, you're absolutely right. If, if we hadn't had the delay, self-inflicted delays by this assembly for the last four years, we'd have probably gone to the market to borrow money, but at the same time as the Isle of Man borrowed money, last September at 1.625%. And you're absolutely right, the latest half a billion was, was raised at 2.85%. Now, one thing I, I have worked out is it's stress tested, the latest thing is stress tested up to 3.25%. At 3.25%, and we can debate the 7% return that the fund, the strategic referred fund, have delivered over the last 10 or 15 years. We can debate whether that's sustainable or not. <coughs> but but, but, but if, if, if it is at 7% and at 3.25%, strategic reserve fund will end with two billion pounds in it as opposed to 1.1 billion pounds at the end of the period of time. I will admit, I will admit, I'm very concerned about missing the markets and I'll watch a very, very close eye on that one because it could tip over the fact of, of being what, what has been a, a, a recommended solution by the fiscal policy panel to it might not be. And I would like to consider that. I actually agree with that. Um, integration in Jersey. Uh, you're absolutely right. And, and I've been appalled by when people come over here. Um, it is, they don't know what they have been invited to do and they're not looked after properly when they're over here. So they, can I continue or shall I? Okay. Um, the, um, they, they come over here on the expectation, say, of working for nine months and a certain amount of income and a certain lifestyle. That is not necessarily delivered because the transparency of that sort of job offer, shall we call it, is not delivered on. And we are letting down a lot of people like that. I want more transparency into we call it the interview process, the license application process, and the subsequently looking after the process. And also I want to ensure they get private health or health supported day one. Oh, I could carry on with that one, but I can't. <laughs> I'll press my head this time, David. Um, David, the, you, you have said far more eloquently what I've been uh, haltingly trying to say at every hosting where we've been asked that question. I want to get a hospital built. We do need a new hospital. Uh, we are failing islanders in the healthcare we're providing, not just in the hospital, but right across these communities, but that, that might be another question. Uh, but 
uh, we need to have a short period of, it could be called reflection or review, where we are absolutely open and transparent with the public about what it would cost now to build a hospital on the uh, hill because of the inflation levels that you uh, outlined. But also, we can't fall into the trap of saying, well, we've got a cheaper model over here because when we were going to build a hospital at Gloucester Street, that's now a price which is five years old as well, and that was going to be 450 million there. We've got to have open and transparency with the public about what we spent, what it would cost on the hill, what an alternative would cost, and I think we can do that by the end of August before we would have been signing the deal for the uh, hospital on the hill, and then make a decision when the public's got all of the information uh, before them. Um, Fiona, it's about welcome. Jersey is a really welcoming place. Somehow, we haven't done very well at translating that welcome to the immigrant community that we need to sustain our livelihoods and to sustain our economy. We need to change the narrative. We welcome people with open arms, and when they're here, we behave in a welcoming way, and that means many different things that we can do. Thank you. David, uh, excellent question and very, very well put. Um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the Kansas City, uh, I've met four or five people who want the hospital built, where it's proposed, and they want to build now. And I must admit, 40, 50 times that number who do not want it built uh, on the hill, and they do not want it built for the sum that is proposed. Uh, and we in, in the Liberal Conservatives are opposed to it. Because it's not, if you forget or think it's a little bit paper, it's our grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren, uh, children. And that is wrong. Uh, we do need a new hospital, we need it very quickly. Uh, over the years, the government has not maintained the hospital as they should have. They're very good at not maintaining their buildings. We all maintain our property as well as we can. Uh, sadly, the government don't. And it's been a big mistake because we need a hospital to be working. Uh, and we need it uh, at the right price. So yes, we do need to review it very quickly and build a hospital that's fit for purpose, that's fit for people to work in very quickly. Uh, on the matter of uh, immigrants coming down, I think people have very short memories. We are all immigrants. This island, I mean, you know, somebody came from our family back in the 1100s. Uh, my father came just after the war. We are all immigrants. We've all come to this island at one stage or another. We had a massive Irish immigration. We had a massive Portuguese immigration. We had the Italian immigration. We had Polish immigration. And people coming from England and Scotland. And, and course, it's ridiculous to, for anyone to suggest that people are not welcome here. Our society is enriched by people coming here. Our culture is enriched by people coming here. And I'm very sad that people don't think that. And uh, if they don't think it, then perhaps it's time for them to rethink their position in Jersey. about the hospital. Uh, yes, I think the New States Assembly most certainly has a responsibility to ensure that the plans before they are signed off at the final business stage case are both affordable and fit for purpose and indeed that they represent value for money. Um, and I would say as well that that clearly applies to capital projects at the hospital, but part of what we need to look at in terms of fit for purpose is how it works in the context of the health system more broadly. And one of the known issues at the moment, I think it's fair to say, or certainly widely recognised issues, is that the Jersey care model, as currently set out, is manifestly in need of more work. And insofar as decisions about the hospital depend upon decisions made in the Jersey care model, they need to be looked at hand in hand. But yeah, the site selection has been done, and my, my party envisages changing that. But within that site, there is still a lot of work to be done to ensure that we're doing, building the right hospital at the right price. On the second question, I'm terribly sad to hear what you've said. Um, and I can only say to other people, I hope that's not too widespread an experience. And I think, I don't have an easy answer because it's cultural change we need. 
The new language strategy for schools, which values diversity of language and culture, I think, will help with the younger generation. And certainly, with Paul Jersey, we're very committed to inclusion. And indeed, we have party standing from both Romanian and Portuguese backgrounds. Uh, thank you. of it. 
I um, would support a quick review, but I should declare that I do have a family member who lives close to Overdale, and um, in a place that actually the first planning report said would be affected. So um, I would have to take advice about if I could take part in a review or a debate or a decision on it, so I should explain that to you. Fiona, your question. Um, Jersey is a deeply divided place at times, and we don't often see it, but you don't have to scratch very far to find it. Um, we roll out the red carpet to people with money, but we don't do it to other people. And actually, that is not acceptable to me. Um, I know money talks in lots of ways, but also people are important, aren't we? That's the basis. We're seeing it at the moment with the recruitment crisis. If we had homes to put them in, we'd be flinging open the doors and bringing people in to do the jobs that we need to help all of us keep going, but also the rich people whose money we want to bring roll out the red carpet for as well. So we have to work harder. Some countries like Canada, for example, actually have departments set up to welcome communities at all levels. Um, your courses aren't free for people to attend, are they? They have to pay for themselves. Is that something we should be looking at as, as a simple um, thing? And when we do debate our population policy, we need to, in my view, have a healthy discussion as a community and look at the language that we're using as a government. I don't think we've done ourselves any favours in the past there. Two further questions. Just before we do that, there's a gentleman at the back that's got one. Um, just on this side, I think he's got the red checky shirt on. And the lady with the white and black top on. Just before you ask the questions, could I just remind the candidates you wanted 90 seconds to answer? You've all got forms, so I might start getting a bit more leaner. But also, could I ask you, it's very hard to answer questions on spec, so if you could keep your question as brief as possible, I'm sure that will add to the benefit of all. <coughs> Gentlemen. Hello, uh, John Tan from uh, St. Lawrence. Uh, all of the candidates have mentioned going around and knocking door to door to hear what their constituents uh, want them to uh, consider. I want to know how the candidates will continue to do that actively uh, if they are elected. So for example, where will you hold clinics? How often? How will people know about them? What feedback will you give? I'm particularly interested in those uh, candidates who may have ministerial positions, how will you continue to affect your constituents' opinions when you have a ministerial portfolio? Thank you. Kate Roman Cross, Parish of St. Wong. This is succinct. Candidates will be aware that there are a large number of islanders who put their own lives on hold for loved ones to care for loved ones in their own home on an unpaid basis. If elected, how do you to intend to support these unpaid carers? Thank you. considered very seriously before I decided to put my name forward for deputy. Having been a senator now for three terms, previously being a deputy, because I knew that there would be a conflict between what I would want to uh, the assembly electorate to elect me to do, which is carry on doing external relations and financial services, and yet really importantly re representing the interest and the voice of um, the three uh, parishes. And so I've already resolved personally that I will set aside diary time. Officials uh, know that they will have to do this uh, on a daily basis to answer telephone calls and answer emails. That will have to be put into ministers' diaries, otherwise it will get uh, squeezed out. I think the candidates will also be talking about um, surgeries across the parishes and perhaps even uh, having a uh, a member's office in one of the parishes or in the uh, parish hall. We need to liaise with the uh, constables about how we can best do that. 
uh, but they need to be monthly uh, surgeries in all three parishes. The pathway is three monthly, uh, and we will need to make time to deal with this new system so that parochial issues are well represented. Uh, I've run out of time. The carer strategy uh, was something that we uh, delivered uh, back when I was doing a different job. That needs to be reviewed, it needs to be like lots of other strategies brushed off because the value of individual uh, carers is. Um, Thank you, Mr. Gross. I think your time is up. It is. I, I'm very sorry. As I mentioned in my opening uh, speech, it's been a real privilege going around and talking to people. And I can tell you I've had some very, uh, very difficult situations and I've got a notebook full of numbers and names that I do intend to take up uh, once elected. The, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but, but no, but seriously, I, I will. And I say to everybody, I hope I said to everybody, as soon as uh, things, you know, are known next week, then come back to me. Come and, come and knock on my door, give me a ring, email me, and I will do my utmost. Uh, as I also said, I'm a listener and I act, uh, and I mean that. I really am a listener and I do act. And so I will take up cases that uh, people have, uh, and I know people have some very serious ones. Uh, on, on the carers, I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because as a society, we're saving money because carers are doing the work that society, that, uh, society perhaps should be doing. Uh, there should certainly be a lot more relief for carers and there should be a lot more understanding of the difficulties that a carer goes through. Uh, we have a carer as one of our candidates in the JLC and she is absolutely dedicated to caring for her father. Uh, and it is uh, very, it imposes enormously on her own life as it does in every other carer's life and their ability to earn and continue. And it's society that's gaining because of the time that people are taking caring for their relatives. So I think it's something we really must address and look at ways that we can help either the carer or the sufferer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. On the first question, um, initially I would do what other members of my party who've been in the assembly do other reform candidates, which is to hold the drop-in session in a cafe or similar, and I did in fact hold some during the campaign period. I think also, as other candidates have said, and it's not just in this district either, we do really need constituency offices, and that would provide us with a location, those of us who are elected, whoever that may be, to do, as an individual member, to see members of the public, constituents, and do casework. And it would also, where appropriate, provide an office for the four representatives of the district to get together and work on matters of local rather than island wide concern. On the second question about unpaid carers, it's a problem not just here, it's a big problem in other jurisdictions, including the UK. And I think sadly it's partly a symptom of the fact that as a society we value economic productivity above all else, and that is just so wrong. Care is absolutely essential. People give up so much to care for loved ones, and often in terribly difficult circumstances. I've never done that myself, so I'm not best placed to know what would most help people, but I think respite care, respite, and support for carers, practical support, such as respite, is fundamentally important, and I'd like to listen and find out what else would help, but definitely that's something we would want to do as a government. Thank you.
could easily forget about this work, this work that's going on um, around us, where we need to make it visible and, 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 and valued. Um, and in relation to, I too work, I too um, worked, I did two terms as a deputy before being elected as a senator, and I thought, like Ian, long and hard about how we might do that in these, in these big districts. Other members have mentioned as well the fact that we could open a constituency office in one of the parishes so there's a, 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 a meeting point, a centre point where parishioners can come to and contact us. And I think I think all states members generally are, are very approachable and contact as well. And I in, intend to be uh, as you just said, many uh, parishioners who have worked with me or approached me know it's easy to get hold of me and I always respond and I intend to continue in that vein. Very, very effective. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, COVID came along. 
on. So we didn't see that through to its fruition. But that is something I found was very, very valuable, just inviting people into, into an area and a cultural area. Um, the, I have a reputation of having an open door policy. I was talking to people today who actually thanked me for the fact that I'm one of the politicians that has always returned to folk law and has always responded to their needs. And that is something I'd like to get out there, that I genuinely do and I believe in that. Um, the, uh, one of the regrets that uh, I wish I'd actually gone out and taken, say, one Saturday a month for the last four years and just, just gone out and chosen a different part of the parish to go and, and meet and greet people and find out what they're thinking. Because this experience now, even condensed into one month, it is an enormous learning experience um, and, and very valuable as well. Um, in this role I've learned over the four years, you, you don't know anything when you start, uh, but you do pick up subjects that you learn about, mainly because of interaction with your parishioners, where, where they ask you to look after them in a certain area. I, I've looked after from day one a, a paraplegic guy whose twin brother was his, his nominated carer, and the twin brother um, decided he wants to move on and, and get a life, and I don't blame him for, for, for that. He's a very talented individual. The experience I went, and the transition from being the, 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 the twin brother carer to having his care on his own, I'm afraid was pretty disgraceful. And that's opened my eyes up, so I'm not going to give you an answer of what to do, but I'm acutely aware of, of the challenges. Thank you. Right, we have opportunity for two more questions, and that is it, I'm afraid. You can show us the candidates afterwards. We've got a lady at the front there. And anyone from, from this side, the lady just about the fourth row back? Hi, I'm Zoe, I live in St. Wands, and uh, I'm a bartender, and um, there's been quite a few like tax increases over alcohol and stuff like that. And uh, I've noticed over the last couple of months that hospitality seems to be dying, and most like, departments that I work at is almost empty. Have you got any plans to sort of solve that or revive hospitality in the industry? My name is Maxine and I'm in St. Mons. Um, one of the areas that is really growing in the poverty area is pensioner poverty, often denied by the people who are suffering it. Many women in this island, 70 upwards, do not get a full state pension because we did it differently. We stayed at home with our children till they went to primary school. And we get a percentage taken off because of that. What are the candidates thinking about when they look at the struggles that older people have in this island? flights in and, and back and boats as well. And without the hospitality industry, we would all have to pay an awful lot more for our travels to and from the island. Uh, also, we wouldn't have the restaurants and everything else. And it goes back to the question about labour as well. Uh, so we, we do need to support hospitality businesses firmly. We absolutely do. It's very important. Because without them, we, we would, as an island, would be suffering more. Uh, and, of course, at the moment, we could be earning an awful lot more with the French, uh, because the French cannot come into the island at the moment unless they have a passport, and the French, being the French, uh, don't want passports, they want their countries, obviously, because the French actually uh, generally uh, holiday in France or neighbouring countries where they travel to within the EU seat. So uh, we need to address that, because we're losing thousands of pounds every week uh, without the uh, French dangerous. And we might, you know, and of course the problem uh, link would perhaps be lost. So that's very important. Uh, pensioners, yes. Um, the, we, we've had this on the door very often, uh, where in fact one lady's got to her house now, which is very tragic, because she's been supporting her grandchildren as well. Um, and uh, pensions are as generous as they could be, and I think perhaps we ought to be looking at cases where there is 
regenerative logic in a far more sympathetic way. on hospitality. I have to admit, I wasn't aware of what you said this evening, and that's new information to me. I was aware that the hospitality industry is struggling to get staff, and that some places are getting closer to people now as they wanted to. But your perspective, from what you're seeing, that as I understand it, your customers are down on what you'd expect, is new information to me. And I don't know what's driving that. You've suggested it might be partly crisis, and I suspect you're right, crisis cost of living is part of it. And I do wonder also whether the long-term effects of habits changing from people getting used to staying at home during COVID might be playing a part. So that's something I'll have to take away and think about. But clearly, it is an important part of the economy. It also plays an important role in people's lives. And if that's an area where things are changing that I wasn't aware of, which it sounds as if it might be, that's something we're going to have to think about, so it's going to cop out and answer, but thank you anyway. And on the second question about pensioners, this is something a lot of people have raised with me on the doorstep, and it is one aspect of one group's real difficulty at the moment. It's being exacerbated, of course, by the cost of living rises, which are affecting various other groups as well. But certainly, I take your point completely about women who in, have kind of missed out the changing social norms over time, effectively. And I think it's a part of the number of things we want to do to help GST and rent control. And I have time for that very well, sorry. Um, I think that's probably the smart way to describe it. 
we do need to look again at the social security contribution system and how we use the funds that we have behind us to better serve our community. And that will take some careful thought. So I don't think I can conjure something up that will be an answer on my feet right now, but I do recognise the issue and I feel that we should use those funds. Um, at one of our recent Let's Talk sessions, it, the message from hospitality of the members who were present were, was, we don't feel valued. And isn't that a really sad situation to be in for an industry like <coughs> hospitality that we all enjoy and um, is part of Jeremy's way of life and the offering we present to other people as well. So we need to work, work harder on that. I would like to see us resist um, any tax increases when the next budget comes up, particularly as we're going through this cost of living um, squeeze at the moment and things are increasing, I don't think it would be helpful particularly for anybody at this stage. Um, and as others have said, we should look at our permit system. The nine month permits, for example, don't work particularly well for hospitality, also we've been told recently. Um, so there are lots of things that the government could be doing. There are also challenges ahead, things like the living wage that lots of candidates have committed to implement in the next four years. Um, industries like hospitality <coughs> are going to need some conversations <coughs> with government and support and guidance in that process as well. Um, Maxine, on your question of pension and poverty, it's something I've heard a lot about on Broadcast over the past few weeks. Um, and issues such as paying tax on pensions as well. Um, and people who are perhaps, perhaps too proud to claim some of the things that are maybe available to them as well. Um, it's one of the reasons in my manifesto I suggested we really should look at catch-all um, options to help with the cost of living because of people on the fringes who may be impacted. And there's obviously a wider discussion to be had around the pension. in this field, Lindsay Ash, and I wish he was here because this is his real bugbear. Um, the, um, the, one of the things is we don't have the manipulative ideas like happy hours to attract people in, they're not allowed. I believe the competition authority is just probably something on an alcohol pricing. Uh, I, admit, I haven't read in detail, I've had a headline of it, where we pay more for the distribution of alcohol than virtually anywhere else in the world, which we must be able to address and attach. We mustn't forget the social benefits of hospitality. So when we uh, elderly couples meeting up for lunch somewhere and having a fight, it's part of their life, it's part of their things, it's becoming prohibitively expensive for them. I still don't understand why a pint of beer is over five pounds here and a weatherspoon in somewhere in England is one pound ninety nine. Go figure. I don't get it. Um, on to the uh, uh, pensions. It, it is ludicrous. I was talking to, to some uh, people today, a, a lovely lady today, and <coughs> she's just had a three point nine percent rent increase uh, in, in, in a. In a the state's how to make it loosely, but her pension went up 2.9%, and inflation is running at nine. What's the relevance of that? We really must make all these decisions in sync to all, so, so, so people's lives are, carry on in the, in the same way. I still don't understand why you have to do 45 years over here to get your full pension. And I, as everybody knows, it's public domain. Like my working career was in London. I'm entitled to my poor, I'm to my poor state's pension when I was 52 years old. It was 30 years. So that would give plenty of breaks, as you were talking about, in, in, the, working, in the working in life to bring up families, children, and lifelong learning and other things I talk about the population policy. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I don't want to end on a depressing note, but really both of those questions are an indication of the difficulties that islanders in our economies face with the world situation that we face over the coming months. And uh, we can put in measure, as a new government, and I'll talk about those, but life is not going to be as easy for the rest of this year with rising inflation and government is going to need to intervene in some ways that it might not have wanted to do previously. In my manifesto I pick up on the point about duties around alcohol and say that they, as part of uh, dealing with the cost of living crisis, they should be frozen. But we should also reduce uh, duties on fuel as well, not just 
uh, fuel that we put in our cars, but also heating fuel as well, because we're going to need to support each other through these difficult uh, months. The same with the pension question. When I was Minister of Social Security, I introduced what's technically called the triple lock, which means that the pension can go up in line with inflation. We know inflation is increasing, so we're going to see that uh, increasing. But we also need to think about some other innovative ways to deal with uh, pensioners who currently pay tax on their uh, state pension. I'm just talking about state pension here. I think that you could have an offset in the tax regime for a short period of time to deal with some of these issues. Uh, Senator Moore was right when she asked the states to set up a working party to look at how we could support islanders through this period. I am optimistic that we can do it. It will be difficult, but if we do what we do best, which is coming together as a community uh, to support each other, then I think we can have a positive four years as well. Thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid that's time up, shall we say. Can I just thank you all for coming along tonight? Can I thank the candidates for arranging tonight and also for their other hustings that they've done in St. Peter and St. Mary? Can I remind you once again that polling day is a week today from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and hopefully you will all vote. And that thank you to Alison for looking after the ringing the bell. And for I'm